What's up guys, Mike here. Welcome back to Game Dev with AI, our place where we're developing a new real-time strategy game called Nuke Them All, just with the tools of AI, such as ChatGPT, Midjourney, and many others. This is a challenge that I've been running for the last few months. If the guy like me, without any programming skills, can develop a real game. As you know, I've been inspired by the old school game called Z developed by Bitnama Brothers back in 1996 when I was still a kid in school and I've been such a big fan that I even wanted to develop my own remake of this game called X Strategy and I even visited Bitnama Brothers personally in Britain and met legendary Mike Montgomery showed him my early developments but the project didn't succeed we couldn't finish the game because it was simply too difficult it was just too much of a task and our small team couldn't handle it so now 20 years later i'm developing this game myself this time i don't have any hired programmers i'm just doing everything myself in the engine called construct 3 which is a great engine for guys like me using visual programming the concept of the game is similar to the old school game Z. We're supposed to capture the flags, defend our own fort and destroy the enemy blue fort. But this time we have a twist. We have an actual nuclear bomb that we can capture, produce and launch on the head of the enemies. That should be a lot of fun. In this video we continue our developments and add a few other things. And also I've been playing around with um, AI generated videos and I'll show you so far what we got there. What I'm gonna add in our game is artillery and mobile artillery. As you know we already have defenders and Gatling guns, things like rocket launchers that are located on the bases. If you missed our video a few weeks ago I made a video how we developed this defender gun and it's using turret behavior in construct 3 so you can check it out but today what we want to do is two improvements first of all we want to let our player position the artillery so it shouldn't be fixed the player should be able to drag and drop artillery around the fort and place it strategically where he wants it to add a strategical element to our game and also we want to develop a mobile artillery which is produced in a kind of a box a caravan i call it and then the caravan you can drive to the place where you want to locate the artillery then you unfold it disassemble and then artillery will be placed in a in a specific place and again you will be able to position it more precisely by drag and dropping it so if we go to our playground i'll show you first how it works and then, as always, I'll show you the codes and what we did there. So you can follow my progress and see how I'm doing it. Maybe you can give some tips as well. So this is our artillery near the fort in the top left corner. And if I click and drag and drop it, I can actually move it around. And then I drop it. And the circle that you see is a radius. So you cannot drag and drop it forever. If you trying to take it too far that is just holding my hand it doesn't let me put it too far see I have to set the defenses near my fort obviously I cannot just drag and drop it into the enemy fort now the mobile artillery is located in this caravan and I can drive it it's completely defenseless it doesn't have any weapons but if it's destroyed or if I unfold it the actual artillery will come out and start shooting. If I move my cursor over it, I can unfold it. It fades away and you can see the defender is appearing. And again, I can drag and drop and move it to more specific locations. And see it's already started shooting on the enemies. So, looks pretty cool and it adds a strategical element to our game. So we can put it a little bit closer, but again, we cannot move it all over into the enemy fort. The furthest we can move it is in this radius around. All right, let's see how we did it. As always, everything starts with me joining art. 
I've been doing the caravan with different prompts and ideas. It wild west TNT box on the wheels. That's the prompt. As you can see, I got many variations. This one I kind of liked, but the cannon looked really out of period, time period. Our game is a little bit more modern than this. This looks like something that came straight from Clash Royale. I was trying to do different combinations to look more modern. As you can see, it takes a lot of trial and error to get anything done, especially military related with Mijoni. It generates a lot of nonsense. So you go sit through a lot of hours trying to generate <laughs> a lot of things that just don't make any sense. But I need to say they look really beautiful. So I'm really enjoying this process. But it takes a lot of time. So finally, after all these tests, for now I settled down in that box on the wheels that you saw previously. It's not perfect so far, I'm not 100% sure it will be in the game, but as a test I'll use it. So now in our game we'll have the object called Caravan, this one. I tried both but this doesn't look well. This one, Caravan, it will be a part of our tanks family that we developed a few weeks ago. It means that everything from our tanks family will be applied to Caravan, all the selections, the movements, everything, except for shooting, because Caravan is defenseless, doesn't have any power. But I really wanted to make it so that if it's destroyed, it doesn't just lose the weapon, it will just drop the weapon and the weapon will start shooting, because I really hate when they do it in the games, where you destroy the box and then you just lose everything. It's annoying. What I also learned recently, is called templates. In Construct 3 you can choose an instant of the object which will be a template and then the replicas will use the settings. This is very helpful if you have a lot of maps. For example, I can make this one as a template. For example, template and name caravan. And then all the maps will use the settings of this specific template. This way, all others on the map will be the same. If I scale it, if I change it health, all other replicas will automatically get the settings from it. Plus, you can obviously change the settings of each replica individually. So here is our code for the caravan. What we need, I don't need to write the selection and movements because this is inheriting from the our tanks family. What I only need to do is the specific things that are only for caravan. So in this case, on destruction, we need to spawn the defender base and its turret. And of course, we need to pin the defender base and its turret together. So the turret and the base will be stuck together and get destroyed together at the same time. Now also, when mouse cursor is over caravan, I display this sprite called cursor upgrade but later I need to change it for something different. Also, I need um, to add extra condition to make sure that caravan is ready to unfold because I don't want accidental clicks on the caravan make it disassemble. So this is why I have these extra conditions. And finally, when we deselect caravan, we make the ready condition to false. Caravan itself has following behaviors. Simply fade. It means it will fade away over here when we no longer need it, when it's destroyed. And the turret base will appear. So if we move our caravan and then I click on it, the cursor appears. And if I click again, it fades away and then a defender appears and ready to go. So everything works fine. Now about the drag and drop behavior of the turrets around the fort and not around the fort. So we have defender base object, which are the legs of the defender, and it has the following behavior, pin, drag and drop, and sign. 
So you, here you can see full code. As always, feel free to pause it. So I don't waste your time reading the code in real time. It's been a lot of experiments. So things like this, I cannot show on screen how I make it because it takes days, sometimes weeks to make. This is not something I do in, in five minutes. Even with the help of AI, there is still a lot of sweat and tears. So on drag and drop, we choose if our four defender is a fort defender this means we can only move it around the fort or it's a free unit which appears with a mobile artillery box if it's a fort defender then in the radius of 1500 around the fort we can uh, make it move when we drag and drop it around and this is the formula that chat gpt helped me with to be honest i'm not fully sure what it means but sometimes you just have to trust the system and it works. So on drag and drop starts, we enable our sign. So the legs start moving because it's out of in this hands, basically. Then I spawn this line of sight. It shows the radius and we run the sound. And when we release the mouse on drag on drop from drag and drop, we disable the movements of the legs and we spawn dust and the sound drop. Now, if we move the mouse over the defender base, we change the cursor to the grab. And now for those defender bases that are created later, far away from the fort, you can pause and see the code here, but basically it's the same. The only difference is we are checking not for the fort coordinates, but for original coordinates where the turret base was created when we unfolded the box. So everything pretty much the same here and it works. Ah, the only difference as well is that we cannot use our shadow code from once we developed far back a few weeks ago. The shadow that we had before is always pinned. So in my case, if I pick up the turret, I don't want the shadow to be displayed because it doesn't make sense if the shadow is on the ground. So basically we have different code. I created shadow two object. And as you can see here, the code will be different because in this case, defender base will be spawning the shadow instead of the old code. Let me show you in case you missed. So here is an old code. Again, you can pause and check it in more detail. But what it's doing basically, like we discussed before, we create a family of shadow casters. And if the shadow caster doesn't have a, a shadow, it just simply spawn the shadow. Simple as that and it works. The only downside, it creates too many objects called shadow. So in future, we might want to optimize it. And if something is not on screen, we really don't want to make a shadow for it, but that's another story. So all in all, we have now Caravan and later I will add to the game, the factory, the tank factory and the vehicle factories, which will be producing caravans and tanks. But this is again another story. And finally, I've been playing around with video to video, video AI editing tools. I found three companies so far. And again, I'm recording this in the early stage of AI development and the tools provided for video to video are very weak and very in the early, early stages. Mostly what they can only do is just sterilize your video. And it looks pretty bad, to be honest. It looks very jittery and not very professional. So later, if you're watching this later, I hope more new tools and new generations will appear. So let me know in the comments below if you found cooler tools to edit the videos with AI. The one that I tried so far is called runwayml.com. So far Gen 1 is available in beta and also Gen 2 is coming out, but I don't have any access for Gen 2. You always have to wait for those things. You can upload your animation. Original looks like this. Okay, the robot is shooting. And then I can stylize it, for example, in Steampunk background All right and the result looks something like this 
To be honest, this is very blurry and messy, messy mess. Now I'm not very impressed, to be honest. Another one is pretty cool, called Wonder Dynamics, which is turning characters in your scene into the 3D characters, which you can create. But the downside of this system is that you need to already create a 3D character, which is a lot of work on itself. So this is not very helpful for me because I use Midjourney, I don't have any 3D characters. So this idea is not very helpful for now. And finally, I also find, found Kyber Beta, which also can stylize like Runway ML. You can see it's uh, allowing you upload your video, choose the style, and this is how it looks. Uh, it's not very impressive, to be honest. Again, very blurry, very messy and inconsistent. And it doesn't know how to animate anything. It's only taking either photo or a video that you already have and stylizes like a mask. It cannot make movements on itself. Like I cannot say, make this robot walk, for example. Instead, it's simply applying those jittery AI kind of random images on top of it and then morphing them into one video. So this is not very impressive, but let's be honest, this is a very early stage of AI and just you wait next year. I'm sure we'll be super impressed with generation two, generation three, and this will be just awesome. So that's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoy our video series. As always, let me know in the comments below what we should add next to the game and what we should improve. And also, if you find more tools that I don't know about, also, please let me know in the comments below. And by the way, we have amazing summer here in Portugal. Make sure if you're in Europe, visit Portugal, visit our, our beaches here. It's amazing summer vacation for everyone who wants, especially in the period from, I would say, May to end of October here in the central area of Portugal. Or if you go down to Algarve, this is really amazing place for you to spend summer holidays to learn surfing and also i'm running second channel called jet surfing nation where you can check amazing jet boards that i've been testing and the foils here you go take care keep on developing and see you later bye